Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you 10 ways that you can add ear candy effects with effects modulator. Let's get started. Effects Modulator is a really creative plugin. You can create so many interesting sounds with it and even the most boring sound can become really interesting if you run it through Effects Modulator. So the first way that you can use Effects Modulator to add ear candy to your tracks is by using it to create pitch shift effects for vocals. Let me play this vocal without the Effects Modulator. As you can see, I've loaded quite a few things and let's listen. Now you know why to go, I had to go. Okay, now what I have here is I have a pitch shifter effect and you will see that I've created this curve here and this changes the pitch. So you can create those really interesting effects. As you can see, I have the tune and I also have formant. This means that these will react independent of each other and we can create those really cool, very contemporary vocal effects. Let's have a listen. Now you know why I had to go, I had to go, I still love you. So as you can see, I'm modulating the format here with this curve and I'm also detuning with that curve. So it goes one octave down. Very, very powerful. And if you wanted to create this effect using audio editing, it would take quite a bit of time. The next way to add ear candy to your vocals is by using the filter module in the effects modulator. So let me activate this and let me show you what I've done. I'm basically modulating the frequency of the filter. Filter. And I have a little bit of a cue, you know, at 50%, but check how interesting this vocal becomes right now. Now you know why I had to go, I had to go. I still love you. I hope you know, I hope you know. Can deny the truth. We will never need to be. Sorry, I had to leave. And of course, you can do some crazy things with this. If I go and add a crazy LFO here. You can add a little snippet of this in a breakdown or after a chorus. All these elements add interest to your productions. Which brings me to my third tip and this is rhythmic distortion effects for vocals. Of course, this you can use for other instruments, they're not just for vocals, but let's try the next effect in line, which is the overdrive here. And as you can see, I'm modulating the drive and it goes really fast, but this will give us a very interesting rhythmic effect. Let's try it. And what I'm doing here, is I have activated the filter bank for this module, which means that I'm distorting only the mid-range. Maybe you want to leave the low end untouched. So in this case, I'm modulating the mid-range because I felt this had the best effect. Let me just move this around so that you can hear the difference. Now you know I had to go, I had to go. I still love you. I hope you know, I hope you know. So I didn't want to have this low end because it kind of made the sound a little bit more loose where when I focus on the mid-range, I get this nice punch. The next tip is adding reverb highlights for your vocals. And for this, I have another module here, reverb. And as you can see, I have this curve going on. So what's going to happen is when we have this peak, we're going to have the reverb and then immediately it's going to fade out. This is very effective, especially if you have a long reverb with a long time and a relatively large size like I have here, because then we will have this really big tail that gets cut abruptly. So let's have a listen. So parts of the phrase have these reverb highlights and some of them are completely dry. I'm going to turn off everything else before the reverb so that we can hear this. Can't deny the truth, we were never meant to be. Sorry, I had to leave. And of course, if you want to smoothen out the curve, if you don't want this reverb to be very abrupt, you can actually do this. You can actually turn up the smoothing and you will get a more kind of smooth curve. Can't deny the truth. We were never meant to be Sorry I had to leave 
Next is adding glitch effects to your drums. So right here I have my drums. And the first module that I have here is the Beat Crusher module. So if I activate this, it sounds like this. And what I'm doing here is I'm modulating the sample division. And this gives us these really interesting glitch effects. So that's also very interesting. Again, if you play with the spectrum here, you can create some really, really different effects, especially if you add this effect to the top end or the low end. You know, just play with it, listen to it, and see what you like the most. In my case, I prefer to leave the top end alone, but I'm adding the beat crusher to the low end and the mids. So it's really, really cool. Next is adding spectral panning for drums. So let me show you how this works. I'm going to activate this. I'm going to turn off the beat crusher. And as you can see, I'm using the panner module here with FX modulator. But instead of making my drum git go from left and right all the time, I've only added this to my top frequencies. And this means I'm going to get this really weird swirling effects for the top end, but the rest of the drums are going to remain exactly how they are in the panorama. Let's have a listen. So as you can hear, it sounds like the top end is moving. It has a nice animation to it, but we haven't compromised on the sound of our drums. So this can give you a nice ear candy effect. It's very interesting. It gives you a little bit of contrast, a little bit of movement, but still you retain your drum sound. Instead of going like, just the top end. This is also very subtle, so it's a very good way to create interest for your drum loops. The next is adding these gated reverbs on your snares. This is very similar to the reverb trick that I showed you before, but basically what I'm doing here is when we have a snare, I'm going to have a reverb coming in and then it's going to fade out very quickly. Let's have a listen. As you can see, I'm not affecting the kick drum, everything else is in its place, but I'm introducing this almost gated snare reverb. Even though I'm not doing this just on the snare, I'm adding it into the whole drum kit. So if you have loops where you want to add a little bit of a reverb highlight for a specific element, this trick is really useful. As you can see, what I'm doing here is I have my reverb, exactly like before, long, reverb time and large size reverb. And I always choose to keep pre-delay at zero for this one because I want the reverb to hit straight away. Next, I want to show you something that might be really useful for electric pianos, for electric guitars, and this is adding wah-wah effects to the sound. So let's listen to this Rhodes part without the effects. And now let's add the effects modulator. And this is so much fun, you can really take a very simple sound and create something really funky with it. So what I'm doing here is actually very simple. I have my filter module here. As you can see, I have created this curve. I've created this curve from scratch and I have a relatively high Q on my filter and I'm modulating the frequency. I have added a little bit of smoothness and I have it so that it modulates in quarter notes. So this is also in tempo with my song. Next, I'm going to show you how to create some 
tape stop effects. And I'm going to keep this Rhodes part because I think it works great with Rhodes, especially if you're doing lo-fi bits and all these things. And for this one, I'm going to use the time shifter. And let me show you what I've done. I have the delay here. As you can see, I've added like a slight dip here. And this occurs at the end of every bar. So let's have a listen without it first. And then I'm going to introduce it. Kind of conventional. Now let's listen to it with a time shifter. So it can give you these beautiful tape stop glitch effects that are really hard to create sometimes. And this, of course, because you can completely change the curves, you can create some really, really interesting tape stop effects that are really hard to create in any other way. So just experiment, try the different curves, try creating your own custom curves, and I guarantee you, your tape stop effects will not sound like anybody else's. And the last trick that I want to show you today is adding rhythmic effects to your pads. Even if you have the most boring pad sound, the effects modulator can really give you a way to make it interesting. So in this case, I have a very, very simple pad sound. Let's have a listen. You know, it's very conventional. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my flanger here and I'm going to introduce some flanging at the end of every bar. just to give it a little bit of movement at first. And then I'm going to go to my filter. And as you can see, I'm opening the filter with my curve here and then I'm adding this sawtooth wave kind of automations. Let's see. Compared to this, So as you can see, even the most simple pad can turn into a rhythmic element with the effects modulator. I hope this gives you some ideas on how to use this super powerful plugin, the effects modulator in Cubase. I hope you have fun with it. I hope you're creative with it. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.